Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking to you about how to quickly level up your team on Dragon Ball Legends. So, on the team, you want to first of all, most importantly, uh, arrange your team by power level. This way you can tell which of your uh, characters are strongest, and it tells you who you need to level up. So this is my team here, you've got, as I've labelled, most power at the top. And I've got Raditz, uh, Pycon, Vegeta, Pam, uh, Goku, and Super Saiyan Goku. This one's probably like pretty strong. The one thing I want to change out is the Raditz. So this is going to be uh, the second point: is the rank uh, ranking. So basically, the way you want to do it is that, as you can see, uh, people are labeled either hero. Sparking or Extreme. What you need to know is that Sparking is the highest rank and basically that's really important when you're ch picking out your team. It goes Sparking, Extreme, then Hero. And the first character you get, Shallot, is Hero. So you've got to uh, remember this and don't let the game direct the way you train your team. That's a rookie error that a lot of my friends have done and it's ended up costing them a lot as a result. Late game gets really tough so you have to like, if you're starting out uh, like pretty new then it's good to get these habits in like straight away so that you're not like wasting your time and end up regretting it later down the line. So the way you want it is that uh, your team uh, has well it doesn't have to be but like it's preferred if it's all sparking the reason for this is that a level one sparking compared to a level one extreme and a level one hero is just better overall like without any perks or anything just a base level a sparking is better than an ex uh, ex level one extreme or hero it's just like the way the game's desi designed and if we just think of them as the highest rarity as well, like they're the rarest drops out of um, summons. Uh, I'll just save that. <laughs> but like, yeah, so they're the rarest, uh, Sparkings are the rarest drops out of summons. And I think there's six. So I already have five of them, uh, going back to the ones I have. Uh, uh, in my team being uh, the only extreme is Raditz and that's a mistake that I made early on and I don't want you guys doing that as well uh, the only reason I had had to do that was that I already had well right at the start Raditz was my first extreme so I originally thought that that was my best character so I already had like an idea in my head of how this type of game would work if any of you guys have played Clash Royale, a popular Supercell game, then this, uh, I originally thought that like the Extreme was the Legendary, so the best card. But uh, I was very wrong in that. I didn't get a Sparking until like Day 3, but I'd been levelling up Raditz so much, he's just become my uh, most powerful character. That's another thing as well. At the start, if you don't have a Sparking, which is very common, you might not end, uh, even have one for a week, but you, you should be able to. But if you don't, what you want to do is just focus on one extreme, preferably uh, somebody like Raditz who's ranged and uh, yeah, <laughs> who's got ranged, uh, maybe a special type. Melee and stuff is relatively common, so I don't know, you, might, uh, that you could get them every so often. But the re uh, reason you probably would get a sparking quite early on is that if we go to PvP, which you'll unlock by day two at least, and go to the exchange shop, Right at the top here, we can see Goku. That is a sparking Goku power, which you can buy for 120. There was a special offer, I think 100 for 120. I bought that, of course. And that was actually how I unlocked this Goku. Uh, so you, you could easily get one. Like You'll have at least by uh, 300 right at the start of the game if you're doing it right. So it shouldn't be too bad. So that's the thing. So another thing is a shallot. You don't. The game gives you uh, gives him to you as like a main character, but genuinely, I don't think he's that great. Like, just take any sparking and they'll just outplay shallot. 
The only reason Shallot might be okay and like could be in like your passive leveling might be that like uh, the fact he doesn't have any weaknesses. But then again, he's not strong against anyone. That removes like a lot of the tactics. He also has an okay um, power as well. I think he just boosts everything he has, so that's not a bad thing at all. But it's just the fact that like uh, take these three here, uh, my uh, my uh, Pycon, Raditz, and Pan. The reason uh, I've got them is actually because of another reason, which I'll tell you, and that is soul boosting. So soul boosting works in that uh, it basically uh, ranks up your character, gives them like a special boost without having to like level them up basically. So let's say we take Pycorn or someone. What we can do here is that we can increase his blast defense uh, by trading in these. Uh, I forgot what they're called now. We can check. I think they're just souls. Yeah, by trading in souls, and there's different ranks of souls. If you well, while going through the story, the most common ones that you'll get will be blue, green, and red. It's just uh, the way the game's been set up. Like, I don't think they meant to do it on purpose, and I think later on, like uh, a lot of the other ones, like purple, will become more common. But like, it's just kind of the way they've done it, and it's not very like, it's not very good the way they've done it. But like, it's not a terrible thing either. So it's, it's, it's not um, it's not a bad thing. But I mean, like, because of this, I was able to level up Pam and Raditz uh, past the 600 mark. So, uh, because of that, um, yeah, it's just, it's just uh, why I chose them. And then Pycon as well was very close, so I just decided to level him up. But as a result, it's meant that Vegeta, I'm actually, like, trying to get him up now. But it's, it's really hard to do it, considering that, like, there isn't enough purple, like, to collect, purple souls to collect. The next guy I could probably do is uh, Super Saiyan Goku, considering I haven't used any reds. Then the other Goku and then Vegeta if I wanted to. But I really want to get Vegeta up because of another reason. So this is probably the third or fourth point I'm going to make. I've completely lost count here. But it's um, the specific characters. Like late, later on in the game, say you've got like all your, like I've done here. Like say you've got your Sparkings like pretty high level. Then it's about picking the team that you want. From the way the game's been presented so far, so this is the early meta right now, like, who knows, maybe in a month's time after they've added a few more characters, like, the meta could change, but the current meta is Piccolo. As we can see here, like, I, I have two blue Sparkings, and the other Sparking being Piccolo, who's a green. Because of this, and remember, we have to, uh, that blue is actually very common, and if in my starting team I have two blues, a Piccolo is going to wreck me. Because um, because of the cycle, the way it works is that green beats blue. So with green beating blue, someone like Raditz, for example, is just going to get wrecked by a Piccolo of the same level. Or Pam, as well, a Piccolo of the same level would completely wreck. And Piccolo's only weakness is purple. Now, what did I just say earlier? I said green was common, but purple wasn't as common. So most, more likely than not, the guy could have like a level 1000 Piccolo by the time I even get my Vegeta up to level 800 or whatever. Because of that, like, a, ma um, a Piccolo that high level, like, even if I have the counter to it, it's just too strong for me to deal with. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, Piccolo is one character. If you get, just straight out train him. Do whatever you can, story, everything. You need to get the, uh, Piccolo on the team, like, ASAP. Like, um, yeah, like, Piccolo is just so overpowered right now, like, they need to include either more ways of collecting purple souls or just another purple character, just to, like, sort him out. And, uh, as I said before, don't do shallow and just make sure, like, it's all Spartans. I reckon also, uh, don't do two characters of the uh, same colour. A mistake that I've done here on this team is that my most, uh, top three power at the top here, you know, uh, Pycon... Raditz and Pam. Uh, I've got two blues on the team. So what you want to do, you want to have a spread, which is why I'm trying to get rid of the Raditz because he's an extreme. I'll get Pam to surpass Raditz, and then if I am able to get Vegeta, I'll then put Vegeta in the team. Just because you want a variety of colors on your team, though that variety will help you counter more things 
when um, things get tough. So, say for example, your opponent has like two blues or red, um, you want to have um, a green uh, and a blue, but you don't want your just to counter the blue and then a blue for the red as well. Just having a variety will mean that you can counter more things. But it does also mean that you're weaker to things. So I'd say pick up the PvP game as well, like switching and stuff like that. That'll just help out a lot. So now it's more um, specifically into training itself. As I said before, soul boosting is very important. Uh, green, uh, blue and yellow being the most common. So if you have those characters, again, sparking, I'm going to keep referencing that. Just don't, uh, don't unless you don't have anything else, don't uh, uh, do heroes at all. Extremes you can do, but remember, sparkings are still better, so remember to do that. Um, yeah, so soul boosting, that's an important thing. Now, on to the story. This links in carefully with soul boosting as well. So, with Vegeta, for example, I want to boost Vegeta, but I don't know how to get the souls that I want. So... As you can see here, I need, uh, the, where, where it's red, I need four one-star soul orbs and two two-stars. So how do I get these? By clicking on the how to get, it'll actually show me where I can get these. So I need one more uh, super soul one. So I'm going to go to this one here. And then you can check on the rewards. And as you can see, it is available. So this is the reason why purple is actually pretty rare is that you'll get a lot of the whenever there's a purple or something like that available it's mixed in with these greens and yellows as well and other colors that you, you won't get specific purple you you can get like uh, specific blues and yellows and greens which is why they're just so common the game like really needs to fix that if you, uh, otherwise certain characters are going to be more op than others like uh, unless you spend money on the game which i doubt a lot of you will but if you do like yeah, um, it's probably gonna help out a lot. It's a very pay-to-win game, but I reckon like I've only played the game for maybe a week, a week and a bit, ten days. I I think I got the ten-day reward, so I've been playing the game for about ten days, and I think I've done pretty well uh, for uh, for where I've been. I've checked like a few YouTubers who've been playing like since the game came out, and I think I'm relatively close to them. I have been grinding out more though, but yeah, that's just another thing. So when you're grinding out um, the story, you've got to like make sure that um, you select it wisely. So event stories, I'd recommend the most, just because of like the different things you can get. So with this one, you can uh, unlock a bunch of like Raditz things. So first time reward, you get gems and stuff. I think early on though, you get uh, Raditz uh, points as well, which help limit break your characters. I don't think it's shown it here, but through limit breaking characters, it would just make them like that much stronger. In case you're doing a character v character, more likely than not, um, uh, a limit broken one will be like very uh, a lot more powerful. It doesn't make a huge difference, but the difference it makes like can be very decisive in like close battles. Next up, we've got the the most important one, which is training items. When we go to training items here. Uh, this limited time training, nothing's been done for it, so I'm going to leave that out for now, but the experience training is important. In your daily lo login rewards, which I want to show you, but I haven't been able to find an image of it so far, but in that, you're able to choose what you get. The game recommends that you pick 20 gems or something, but the 20 gems a day is hardly like that good uh, in the early game. What I'd recommend is the, what do you call it, the the training weights, uh, these brown ones here. These ones are actually like really useful when you want to like bring up your, uh, level up your characters. We you get the details here, 2 out of 11. And just like the way they work is so good. Like if I put Pam in there, bam, that's like si uh, 7 levels right there. Just from like doing that one and, one and a half hour training. And you get six each time you do the daily login. Unless you're like new to the game, then I think it only does three, but it does, uh, it'll double after like the second day or something. So then you'll be able to collect six, which the training helps so much when you don't want to like grind out the game or whatever. Just go on the game, put some people in training, and that's how it works. This one is the worst one, but this is where I put my best character because I want my top three characters 
to be the um, around the same strength as each other because that way when I'm fighting in PvP I, I want to have like an equal playing ground with all the characters I don't want to have like my one OP pipe on trying to sweat, sweat everything because the moment they use a rising rush on my Pycon and Pycon dies, I'm screwed for the rest of it. Like I've tried teams where like I've got one character carrying everyone else, it just it just doesn't work well, which is the problem. Like these weights as well aren't great. It's just I I feel like they're a waste of an hour and a half. Uh, milk is pretty good. I mean, for three hours it can go get you like really high. Uh, you you won't get it till like late game though, like maybe four or five days in. But still, like really useful uh, when when you do get it. I think that's gonna be everything uh, so far. Um, I'm sorry it wasn't like very detailed. I did go all over the place. I'll try and do uh, a better one for items next time. Those items being souls, training items. Summon tickets, you know, all, all those kind of things, medals. Uh, I'll, I'll go into details with those ones uh, next time. But anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy, and um, please leave a like, whatever. If you have any other ideas for things, challenges I could do, I'd be happy to do them. I think I'm very close to collecting all the characters, and I do believe tomorrow they're uh, introducing a new pack. But this is just going to be a side tip for any of you that decided to listen, uh, stay. I'm very surprised about but when when going to the shop don't w spend all your gems on this one oop wrong one summon so when you go on to summon don't spend all your gems I'd say leave about a thousand because as we can see here this pack is ending tomorrow uh, this, uh, today being the 6th of June so with it ending tomorrow that does mean that they're introducing a new pack possibly with new characters and I reckon they're doing this every month, maybe maybe a bit more common, a bit less common, I'm not too sure about that. Like at the top over here we can see normal, event and featured. This being that maybe they can introduce more packs, so I'd say stay at around a thousand. Don't spend more than a thousand on this pack or the next pack, because I feel like there's going to be a point where they introduced a featured one, and it's going to be so good that you don't want to like, you, you want to like spend all your money there like they could introduce Beerus or God Goku or whatever and that's where you'd want to like start getting they could introduce a whole new rarity for you know this game is still early and like I feel like there's a lot they could add so if you stay at around a thousand gems I feel like that's like a safe bet to make if you collect all the uh, rewards and like thank you gifts that they gave the while ago I think mean, you should have four thousand five thousand gems here, which is really good like that's really generous I'm really surprised because if we go to the shop, like a thousand, the thousand gems I've seen, I haven't spent any money on the game just because, like, I just don't feel it's worth it. But let's take the uh, the best uh, value one over here, which I think is this one. You can get a thousand crystals. You can get two thousand crystals for twenty pounds, which is actually really interesting. So meaning that a thousand is about ten pounds. Is if we round that down to about eight pounds, then it's really good. So hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. Like, subscribe, whatever. I'll do more videos. Uh, I'll definitely be very interactive in the comments. Any ideas or stuff you have, I'll try and do. I'll get. Uh, I'd be happy to give tips as well. If you guys could give me tips as well, that'd be great. So yeah. Uh, hopefully you guys did enjoy, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.